Bob, Bob doesn't want to introduce me. Yo, what's up, everybody? Everyone huddle up. It's getting cold out here. So either start getting, doing some push-ups or huddle together for body warmth. I want everyone to pay attention. Yeah. <laughs> so listen, uh, Gene, way back in the beginning, talked about the history of May Day. And the history of May Day is really important. I remember my first May Day was 2006, the day without an immigrant. And on finals day, 200 people from UB, who normally would never come out and protest, realized that their families were in danger of being deported and came out. Two of them got arrested. One of them got beat up by the police. That ain't right. That ain't right. That ain't right. Carlos, I hit him up today. He's in New York now. And from that moment forward, I, it, May Day became an important holiday in my life from that day forward, and I think it always will be. Um, but, you know, part of tradition is that every May Day, I never really have a speech prepared. So I'm gonna talk about the important stuff. I wanna talk about building culture, because May Day is important to me and it's important to you. That's why you're here. But building culture doesn't happen, doesn't happen overnight, and we all seem to be wondering how is it that we can get everybody that's, that's so upset about their lives right now to, to honor May Day, to honor the struggle, to be a part of the various movements that are going on. There's a great article, uh, I, I, I can't remember the author, but it's Occupying, Organizing, and the Movements that Demand Both. And that's a very important, uh, important distinction to know. Because Martin Luther, I, I'm speaking, the reason I'm speaking today is I come from the community organizing tradition. And Martin Luther King and Rosa, Rosa Parks spent 10 years sitting down in the fronts of buses and talking to people door to door about how few rights black people had in the South. And for 10 years, not that many people joined them. Until out of nowhere one day, people just, it seemed like they woke up and they marched on Birmingham and they sat in the front of the bus and they just wild out for a crazy 10 years. And out of that came the Civil Rights Act, then the, the official end of segregation. And for many years, people have struggled before, before Occupy showed up, um, including myself, going door to door, talking to people about how corporations are screwing them, how their daily inconveniences and their family dramas and their declining health were all related to the same evils of capitalism as it exists now. And then all of a sudden, people woke up. And that's called a movement moment. So what that article is about. No one can predict them, not even the most wise organizers. Some people can. There's been a couple studies, but, and, but the point is, you can never really predict when a movement moment's gonna happen. You never can predict when Occupy is gonna show up and be born. But in that time that you have that fire, you gotta make the best out of it. You gotta make the best out of it, and I'm glad that we had a block party just today on the east side, where people have been struggling since before Martin Luther King. And a couple of them came out, and then they saw us, and they met us, and they got to know us. And we got to know them, and I hope that over time we get to love them, and they get to love us. But the traditional organizing is something that we can use to our advantage. The knowledge is there. The knowledge of how to talk to people is there. And all I can give is, you know, the advice of what little I've learned. If you're trying to bring people into this, we can do it. We can do it if we, jo if we just listen as much as we speak. If the people you're trying to organize go to church, go to church. If they're hanging out in street corners, go to the street corners. Right? If they're at the wrath, if they're hanging out here and they see you, and they feel, because of the history of what they, their people have gone through, that these crazy people in the square are doing something right. But they don't have the time to stop by, and they're going to the wrath building so that they can put food on their table for their families, or so that they can see who it is they got to see to get the little crumbs that the government gives to them. Go to the Wrath Building and talk to them and listen. People know about the economy. They know what's going on. They're not stupid. They may not be able to verbalize it as well as we can. They may not know what the NDAA is or where the WTO is or what NAFTA is. But they can tell you as much about the economy as you can tell them. And that's the community organizing tradition.
is respecting people's ability to problem solve and realizing that we can do it together. So much love to our friends over on Southampton Street who couldn't make it right now. We play our cards right. They'll be here next time with their friends. And a really quick word on the next stage, what I think the next stage will Occupy is, and what I think a lot of community organizations who normally wouldn't have the balls that Occupy does, but are realizing, but are realizing that. Occupy our homes. It's coming. It's happening in Buffalo. If we organize. Take back the neighborhood. Yep, and if you are curious about that, see me, because it's coming soon. Thank you. Thank you. Give it up to Sergio. Next, we're going to bring up Dorian. Is Dorian out there? Dorian's going to speak about jobs and the hood. Well, I was, I was going to talk about the hood, but I decided to talk about something different. Because I guess I am the hood. Today I'm standing here in the cold with a hoodie on and I'm wondering if I'm Trayvon Martin. I'm wondering if I'm going to get shot on my way to my car because I might have some Skittles in my pocket. But th that's what happens and then that's the great divide. And as I was sitting here, I was thinking, you know, what would you talk about? Would you talk about Buffalo? You know, this is the only place in the country where you got urban sprawl and it's not due to population increases. It's due to the fact that they continue to divide us. You got a great divide in such a short distance. I mean, how wide is Main Street? About 35 feet? You got one side of Main Street where people got grass and the other side they just got mud. You got one side where delicatessens actually serve meat. It's a deli. And the other side, you just sell beer and cigarettes and things drugs our children. You got one side where people got jobs and go to work every day and you got another side where people are freezing because they can't afford to weatherize their own homes. You got one side where people and children already know and you know what they want to be when they grow up and you got other sides where children just hope to eat the next day and then we stand there and we continue to let the rich get richer and we continue to let them same people step on us and they fighting us against each other and they plotting us against each other and then we decide to do something about it they want to arrest us but in my mind said I say arrest me because when I stand I don't stand for myself I stand for my children and my grandchildren and generations after me and I would be a fool if I think I'm going to allow my children to go through the same stuff that I went through it doesn't work like this you look at National Fuel and David Smith and what we had to do to get this guy to pony up so that people wouldn't die in the colds. Well, you, you look at, what's this guy named, Jamie Dimon, and how he takes advantage in foreclosing on people's homes. You know, and, and, and the rich continue to get richer. And then they tell you, oh, you know, it's not your fault. Somebody up here said, I read a sign that said, you tell me it's the 400 people? And it's, what, 190,000 lazy people, 190 million lazy people, and it's 400 people? I mean, something is wrong with that. But my question is, now that we know something is wrong, what are we going to do about it? I mean, are we going to stand here and continue to just argue amongst ourselves, or are we going to go out and get active? Are we going to start shaking trees and hope that fruit fall down? I mean, we, we, have enough, we have enough organizations. We have enough people. We have enough. But now is the time that we come together and we really decide to do something about it. It starts with our schools. Starts with our schools. Well, how come Buffalo Public Schools close at 6 o'clock and every other school in Western New York stays open at 8 and 9 and 10 o'clock and our kids and the poor neighborhoods don't have access to the libraries, don't have access to the computers and to the gym and everything else? How come, how come our kids, our coaches, guys like you can't coach but certain other people have to do it? I mean, what are we going to do about it? I mean, then they talk about laying off teachers. Then they talk about laying off this. And they talk about laying off that. But they never talk about laying off administrators. They never talk about, you know, they say we top heavy. You know, no one ever talks about the top heavy. And is it, is it just me? Or am I the only one that can't sleep at night? I mean, sometime it comes to a time in our life where we say enough is enough. And we're going to have to stand. The Bible says, and it's funny, it was written 3,000 years ago and they were smarter than we are. It says, when you've done all that you can do, stand. Stand. And let me translate this in today's terms. When you've done all that you can do, Occupy. Yeah. Woo! Yeah.